Carpet fibers really only have four fibers. There are a few minor ones, but it's essentially these four, which are nylon, olefin, which is sometimes called polypropylene, polyester, which is two liter Coke bottles, and finally wool. And you'll notice between the first two, the nylon and the olefin, that's about 90% of the fibers out there. So that's by far the most. And of course the biggest one, nylon. You have no clue in the world, you have, a, it's 60, 60 some, 60% 60 probably nylon. Some character, and then uh, of course 8% for polyester, about 2% for wool. Every one of the fibers has its advantages and disadvantages, and that's part of what I'm going to be going through. There are places where, like Kevin said, polyester uglies out badly. It crushes badly, but it does have certain advantages, too. There are certain places where polyester can be used. Just that characteristic only. What hand means is how it feels to the hand. Wool has a nice, soft, rich feel. The opposite of it is olefin. 100% olefin has a harsh, plastic-like feel to it. How do you know what this stuff is? Well, the first question is, do you really need to know? Most of the time, you don't need to know. You don't, you don't need to know whether this is nylon, olefin, polyester, and wool to clean it in here, do you? You really don't. So why would you need to know? When would you need to know? When you have to do some spotting. Right, when you get into some serious spotting, you're having a problem. Or there's some kind of problem going on, some kind of excessive soiling going on, something like that, then we may need to know. So anyhow, if we really need to know what kind of chem what kind of fiber this is, we can do that. Nylon dissolves in formic acid. You don't really need to do that. The two easiest are wool. Well, the chemical test is it dissolves in chlorine bleach. Drop some in some Clorox in about 10 minutes. All that's left is foam. It kind of tells you what happens if you spill some chlorine bleach on a wool carpet or a rug. Not a good idea, is it? But there's something even easier with wool we'll get into in a second, which it is what? What's the easiest way to tell whether it's wool or not? Burn. Yeah. Light it up with a cigarette lighter. Smells like what? Burned hair, because that's really what it is. The other neat one is olefin. It's the only fiber that floats in water. Here I've got a beaker of water. I've already squeezed the air out of it. Dropped it. There's another one. Again, I pre-wet it and squeezed all the air out. What do you know about the first one? It's not old. What is it probably? The, one, the second one sinks or floated. What is it for sure? It's old. Is this hard or what? <laughs> Burn tests, yeah, now burn tests get a little more complicated. Some people like to get carried away, inspectors and so forth, and they like these tests. First of all, if it melts, what's that tell you? It's synthetic. If it burns, it's, it's, it's natural, it's, it's wool, could be cotton or silk, but it, if we're talking about carpet again, we're talking about wool. <coughs> Some other characteristics, we have absorbency up there. What is absorbency? It is the how much water will this fiber hold on to? And who cares? What, what, what way does it matter? Well, it can matter a great deal. For example, you had a flood damage job, and it's wool. How heavy is that wool carpet now? Two. It's, it's, it, it, that hundred, every 100 pounds of wool now weighs 130 pounds. If you had to carry it out, it's going to weigh a lot. Plus, obviously, wool loves water, so getting that water out of there is going to be much more difficult. The other thing is, it shrinks. yeah, it shrinks, and the other thing is, most things that get dissolved on a piece of carpet are dissolved in what? Water. So if you think about it for a second, like when somebody spills some coffee or Coke, something like that, with wool, what happens? It soaks it up like a mop, doesn't it? Does it want to let go of the Coke, etc.? No, it doesn't want to let go of it. The opposite of it is olefin. It hates water to the point where the old Teflon and Scotchgard protectors didn't do any good on them because they were dissolved in water. 
Unfortunately, 3M and DuPont recognize that as a problem and have reformulated so that their products are not effective on olefin. And we used to always tell people, don't use protectors on olefin because it's a waste. That's no longer true. Okay, wonderful. This does not, let's say this is 100% olefin laying on this floor. Now, in your mind, you might think, I spill something on there, and since it hates water, it just sits there in a puddle. And I can pick it up and nothing happens. Well, actually, what does happen? It yeah, it just instantly goes to the pad, and the backing spreads out. And that's the problem <coughs> with the olefin. Abrasion resistance simply means the ability for the fiber to resist scratching. Scratching? What, where, where, why would I get scratching? Well, what kind of dirt gets tra tracked into a room? Yeah, concrete. You're going to have concrete dust. You're going to have sand. That's what <coughs> abrasion. So you notice up here, which one is, has excellent abrasion resistance? Nylon. It's the fiber that's going to hold up the best to heavy traffic. In fact, what you'll find is, as we go through this, overall, what is the best fiber? Nylon overall is absolutely the best fiber. There's only certain circumstances where certain of the other ones would be better. How about chemicals? Well, we have two extremes again. Wool is bothered by virtually everything. Chlorine bleach, spill some Clorox onto a wool carpet or a wool rug, you can forget it. It'll dissolve it. It's one of our tests is we just clip some, drop it in some Clorox, and about five minutes all that's left is foam. <coughs> What's its opposite? Olefin. You could build a car battery out of olefin. It's not going to bother. Nothing's really going to bother olefin. Nylon isn't affected by weak acids, but it is affected by extremely strong acids. Polyester, think about those two liter Coke bottles. You can put almost anything in there, it's not going to really bother. It's chemically very resistant, just like olefin, but not quite as chemically resistant. Can you post dye olefin? No. The only way you can dye olefin is to melt the pigments into the fiber. <coughs> Wool, vegetable dyes basically, various types of dyes like that. Back to nylon again. I put three initials up here. AAN. AAN, that's just an abbreviation I did for acid anionic negatively charged. The dyes that are used in dyeing nylon carpet are called acid dyes. They're anionic. What is anionic? Anionic things are negatively charged. Why? Who cares? What are the dye sites in nylon, do you suppose? If the dyes are negative, the dye sites are positive. Exactly. And that's essentially how you dye nylon. It's a chemical reaction of the negatively charged dye with these dye sites on the nylon where it reacts. Well, that's wonderful, isn't it? Except for one minor detail. Guess what kind of dyes are used in Kool-Aid? Gatorade. And on and on and on. They also are acid dyes, negatively charged dyes. That's the biggest problem with nylon. Like I said, nylon, none of these fibers are perfect. <coughs> that's the problem with them. So how do you overcome that problem? What is stain master? The theory is we've got this, we've dyed this, let's say blue, but it only occupied say 10% of the dye sites. 90% of the dye sites are still more than happy to take Kool-Aid. What would you do? You dye it with what? The remaining dye sites you do what with? You react them with a colorless dye called a stain blocker. A little more complex than that, but essentially that's what's going on. Through the holes, so they can't. Yeah. Right. So, so you react it with a stain blocker, which also is negatively charged, but has no color. Then you put the protector on it. Now, as long as that stain master piece of carpet is kept on a lab <coughs> shelf someplace and is never soiled, never walked on, and never cleaned, it performs wonderfully. In the real world. As people walk on it, it gets cleaned, the spotting takes place, more and more of the protector is removed, 
more and more of the stain blocker is removed, and so it will stain again. That's why most of your carpet manufacturers say that after every cleaning, you should do what? Reapply protector. Resilience. So if you sell carpet, what is resilience? Uh, what? Yeah, the ability to bounce back, the bounce, the ability to recover. This isn't a very good uh, slide, I don't think, but I, I forget even where I got this. This is nylon after traffic. This is olefin. The olefin, of course, gets all squished down. What can you can you if it's olefin? Can you do anything about it? Can you go through there and steam it like they say, and it pops right back? Olefin has how much resilience? None. Most charts I see say fair, bull. There's none. None whatsoever. It will not recover, whether it's from traffic, furniture sitting on it, or anything like that. Polyester, poor. Wool and nylon are excellent. Wool, of course, is bothered by virtually everything. Sunlight fades it. You've got problems with moths, beetles, and the sunlight can turn it yellow, that type of thing. Olefin. Again, nothing bothers it. Type of fiber that's used outside, if somebody's stupid enough to do that, it should be olefin because it, the sun does not fade it. The nylon is that it can fade. Stain resistance. If stains are the problem, you just ask about a kid's room, what would you choose? What would you be your first choice? It would be olefin. Your second choice would be, no, polyester. <laughs> So what would you definitely never want in a kid's room? Whoa, whoa. Stains attracted to the fiber. Well, first of all, all of them floats in water. It's the most oil-like. It loves oil. Acid dyes. Again, Gatorade, Kool-Aid, even spaghetti sauce. All these kind of things contain acid dyes. So that's the downfall with nylon. Wool's a protein. It loves proteins. What proteins might end up in a carpet? I put one of them up there. Urine. Again, polyester. Think about those two liter Coke bottles again. It loves oil. Not as bad as olefin, but it loves oil. Melting point. Why would that be important? Are we cleaning at such a high temperature that we might accidentally melt some fibers? No. The reason I put that up there is, to is that melting point is directly related to softening point. The point at which a plastic, all these up here are plastic except wool place at which it can be deformed easily. How could you, through heat, deform carpet fiber? No, it's not so much that. Dan, Dan touched on this yesterday. You guys talked about this a little bit yesterday. Moving furniture. Yeah, As you out. drag furniture, what are you creating? Friction, Friction heat. If this is 100% olefin, and you drag some heavy furniture across the carpet, mm -hmm. guess what? you have permanently deformed the fiber, the filaments. There's nothing on the face of the earth you'll be able to do about it. And as, as one of you mentioned yesterday, the only way, proper way of, move, of moving furniture, other than picking it up, is to use the beam glide, to slide it. The other reason for doing that is, let's say that you pulled out this dresser that has this nice, beautiful cherry wood stain on it and you've cleaned back there now you slide it back you're sliding that over a wet carpet what probably will happen you'll get a furniture stain and so this by using these or like Dan was showing yesterday using the tab something so that we're not getting the wood directly touching the wet floor